Well, good morning, Fellowship Bible Church. Welcome to our online gathering. Um, today, we're excited to welcome John Hill from Ray of Hope. He's a, a community relations a specialist, and he's just here to share with us about the ministry at Ray of Hope and from God's Word. We're just really excited to hear what he's got to say. And as I thought about him coming, a, a verse came to mind. It's actually a prayer by a psalmist. It's from Psalm chapter 82. This is what he prays. He says, Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The psalmist knows that God has a special place in his heart for those who are in need. And so today, as we listen to John Hill and hear from God's word, would you keep that in mind? That there are people who need so much. And now um, I just want to pray as we open our service and we worship God in singing. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you're a God of compassion. That you care for those who are needy, who are poor, who are destitute, the fatherless and the widows. Oh, Father, I pray that, um, that right now your blessing would be upon Ray of Hope and John Hill as he's about to speak to us. And Father, I also pray that in our own hearts you'd stir up compassion for those who need um, help in this life, on this earth, right now. There are so many people. And so, Father, would you do that? Stir up a compassion. May our hearts reflect your heart for these people. And now as we worship you in singing, Lord, I also pray that our hearts would be pure before you and that you would be honored by what we do now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
kind of boring, kind of like bland tasting. Definitely missing something. Hmm. Okay, let's check this second box right here. <gasps> My very favorite potato chips. Let's see if these are any better than the crackers. Oh, it tastes the same. It's definitely missing something. Do you guys know what these items are missing? Ugh. You're right. I think that they're missing salt. Let's see what our FBC kids at home think when they have to taste food without salt. Kids, that's a great job, and you came up with the same conclusion. If there's no salt in some of these foods, they're just like, bleh. Well, in Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says that you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. What does that mean? Well, first of all, let's talk about what salt is used for. In the winter, we put salt on our roads and sidewalks to melt the snow and the ice. Salt is definitely used to flavor food so that they taste better. Bible times, salt was used to pay soldiers. They did not get money, they got salt. Because remember in those days there were no refrigeration units, no fridges, and so they needed salt to preserve their food. Salt is a preserver. Salt makes things useful. So when the Bible says you are the salt of the earth, it means that we need to be useful for God. And when we serve God and we serve others and we love others the way God would want us to, we are being useful and we are making things around us so much better. So this week, when you're in your house, when you're outside, are you going to serve others? Are you going to show God's love to the people around you so that everything just becomes a better spot where you are? I hope that you say yes and that you plan this week to be salt. So my question for you this week, are you salt? Well, it's almost time to go, but I have to tell you, I did bring my very favorite food, potato chips with salt, and let's just take a taste and see if these are any better than what I had earlier. Mmm, so much better. Well, guys, it's been great being with you. Remember this week to serve God and be salt, and we'll see you next time.
I'd like to start with a question for you. Can you be a ray of hope for the least of these? The hungry, the thirsty, the lonely, those in prison, the sick, the homeless. That's what Jesus instructed for us to do. And this is where he divided the sheep from the goats in Matthew 25. Hi, I'm John Hill from Ray of Hope in Kitchener. And I'd like to share with you how we at Ray of Hope serve the least of these as Jesus instructed. So you can see in our uh, PowerPoint here, our mission is to demonstrate the love of Christ by investing in people, inspiring hope, transforming life. We have grown in 54 years to have seven different locations, seven facilities, nine service areas, 37 programs, 150 employees. And we did have 2000 volunteers up until the pandemic hit where we had to <clears throat> cut back somewhat in how our volunteers are even able to help us. But we hope to get back there someday. Ray of Hope started with Armand Wright. He was a young pastor who went and did a chapel program in Guelph Reformatory over in Guelph when it was open. He saw young men, 16 to 21, coming into the prison for what you and I would call petty crimes today. Back in the 60s, if you did something equivalent to shoplifting, you went to jail. That's unheard of today, of course, but back then, you made this, a young man made a bad choice, a bad decision, a mistake. And he goes to prison where he learns how to do much bigger crime where he learns how to do violent crime, where he gets involved in a drug lifestyle. Armin had this bold, audacious vision from God to have a Christian prison. So that very first picture there, I'm sort of blocking it, is Hope Manor was built in 1973 had room for 21 young people, young men, uh, 16 to 21, first-time offenders. And if they stayed there, that was their time. If they took off or messed up there, they were going to do their time in the big prison. We were so effective in the 70s that the government asked us to start a second home. So we started a second home. When the Young Offenders Act was proclaimed, that second home became open custody and Hope Manor became the secure custody. Secure custody, of course, we had to build fences and put up, uh, there's no bars in the windows, but the windows are unbreakable. They're a type of window that uh, is much more secure. The doors are locked, so you can't get out. Whereas open custody, you can leave, but if you do, you'll probably be sent to secure custody. In 87, we were asked to start another one. So we opened a, sec a third one. In 97, um, we were asked to take over Oasis, which was already running in downtown Kitchener for the homeless. And so we took that over and brought that up to speed. And uh, in 2000, we were basically started a, uh, an employment program for people. As we saw needs, we just grew more and more. In 2008, we saw the great move of addiction problems and started an addiction residence where you stay there 24 seven. And in 2010, we were asked to take over another uh, building, which uh, I'll just move here, um, is the community center today. We were asked to take that over because we were bursting at the seams in Oasis for the homeless. 214, we were asked to, basically, we started an alternative education program with a Board of Education teacher. We actually have Board of Education teachers in all of these programs um, because they are very effective. 215, we were able to do a big renovation of the community center to make it far more dignified for the homeless. 
which brought us to 217, 50 years of Ray of Hope. And here we are four years later. Ray of Hope has been in Waterloo Region helping people <clears throat> face the storms of life for over 54 years. We have four addiction programs. We have two employment programs, two youth justice programs, four education programs, and 20 community center programs to help strengthen areas of need for the poor and homeless. So why do we do this? Well, Deuteronomy 15 says, commands us to open your hand wide to the poor and needy in your land. So serving them by opening your hand wide, generous. Second Corinthians 1.4 talks about God who comforted us when we had troubles, when we had trials, so that we may comfort those who are in any trouble with this same comfort. And that's really the premise of what we do. So here are the youth addiction programs. We have a residential program. You stay there for anywhere from six to nine months. <clears throat> you live right in the building. There is a school at the back of the building and a board of education teacher there working through addiction issues. We have a day treatment program. Uh, if you can't handle that level, um, and you're still struggling with using, then you come to the day treatment program where we have youth addiction counselors. We have a board of education teacher. So you're, you're right in school right there, but you're also in doing some group work and so on. Then we have community-based treatment where we have five uh, addiction counselors that are assigned to the 22 high schools in Waterloo Region. And they go in and work with kids that are trying and struggling to get free of their addiction. If you know anybody, <clears throat> any person who is struggling with a child stuck in some kind of an addiction, give us a call. We have a parent support group. We have actually four parent support groups running. We, I believe in 219, we put through 92 parents. We are now virtual if you're not comfortable coming in, but we also have in-person live ones. So Welcome to do either one of those. In our employment program, <clears throat> there is a six-week component where you're learning about uh, many different things to improve skills and confidence. This is for people 16 to 30 that uh, have barriers to employment, and they help with conflict resolution and things like that, as well as uh, how to not only get a job, but keep that job. We have... Uh, catering program through the morning glory of course that has been stifled a lot with this pandemic however we are still serving uh the house of friendship needs breakfast every day for 120 people so we send them we helped out st john's but i'll get into a few of those things later morning glory cafe um, we have a couple of cafes that we're operating right now they're not because of uh, the pandemic in our custody programs, we have a secure custody. This is the secure custody with many additions to it uh, over the years, um, but it's a, a much better place for people, young kids coming in, young offenders, where they're gonna learn some Christian values and good positive um, ethics and so on. We have a re youth reintegration program, and this program is basically kids coming out of custody, out of locked up custody and going back into their family, their community, where maybe that's part of the problem of their crime. So with this program, it's an aftercare kind of program um, where Kent is our worker there and he would meet with them, go through things like, what's the environment? Who are your friends? What's your schooling? What's your family life? And meet with them. And it actually has proven to be a very successful program at kids not getting in trouble again. And the government has actually told us very, very successful because most of the kids do not offend five years later. And if a young offender getting out of custody doesn't offend within five years, they probably never will. So it's a really good program. It's very small. But alternative education is another program where kids just don't fit into the situation at school or they're falling behind in one area but not another the alternative education has more personalized i think there's like eight 
we have up to eight kids with, uh, there's a teacher, there's a TA, and then there's also usually a staff member there that can all help with anything that they need help with. What about the homeless? Over the past 25 years, a few things that you need to understand about the homeless. In 1992, social assistance was $891 a month if you had no other income. Now it's 733. It's like, oh, the 30 years ago, weren't things a lot cheaper? Yeah, housing and food was way cheaper. So wouldn't it be going the other way? No, that's part of our problem. But in 25 years, our region has increased to have 285 shelter beds for the homeless. But in six months, in 2020, in a pandemic, they added 225 more beds. Problem is, this is not sustainable. I can give you this uh, website on YouTube where you can go and, and see how that has happened and what's going on there. It's really good that we've doubled it. But why all did it take a pandemic to do this? Canada now has the highest percentage increase in housing costs. You can go to the OECD, which is the kind of national um, United Nations uh, program that tests housing. And Canada has one of the highest percentage increases in housing over the last 20 years. The housing crisis that greed is really creating has pushed many into homelessness for the first time ever. Why do I say push? There's a movie. It's a documentary you can see. It's about ghost houses. And here you have a uh, picture of these dark, empty buildings that are making money. Why? Housing has become financialized. It's kind of like a brick of gold. You bought it 10 years ago and it just sits there it's almost like you know just sitting there growing in money it's become more and more valuable well a home whether it's a, a condo a, a townhouse a house there are 1.3 million of these in Canada water region isn't exempt it's not like were any better. We have 8.7% of our houses are ghost houses. These are empty houses on purpose because they make money. If you bought one here in Waterloo Region last year, today you could sell it for 20% more. So you just made 20%. You can't do that on the stock market, not very well. I mean, if you're lucky, you can in some special stock, but probably not. And we have 400 4,500 families needing housing. It's going to take 15 years to fill. And we're losing affordable units every day because of building these big towers, these big condos. Well, yeah, you can have it for three hundred fifty dollars or $400,000 plus condo fees. So I can go into other stuff there, but um, I won't get into that right now. You can ask me about it because... It's not just housing. It's not just about the housing. I'm just gonna move this out of the way here. Serving the homeless requires a lot more than just providing a home. If it was only about providing a house, we've got them. We got a million sitting there empty, but it's drug addiction, mental health, you know, so many other things. And so we need to work on the other things. So Ray of Hope, community center is really about that. Serving meals to over 250 people a day for 365 days a year, that was before the pandemic. We had seven other services, 12 small support groups, four spiritual care groups, three medical care groups. Here you can see that we had seating for 250 guests before the pandemic. Now, with social distance protocols, seating for 48 guests and takeout for the other 180. So that's about what we're averaging these days. We have a marketplace. It's a lot of people call it a food hamper. We call it a marketplace where you can come in and you can shop. You can get what you need. You get so many points depending on your family makeup. One person is so many points, whereas having kids and different age kids is different points. 
but you have a little more dignity. The staff, the volunteers can build rapport with people. Um, they can talk about budgeting these points. They can talk about nutrition. Um, we have the community meals, of course, the ones that I talked about. We actually do a breakfast and a lunch and a supper now. Um, chapel, uh, we have a chapel service. It's not like this anymore. It's more two or three people with one. Um, we also have Bible studies and different things like that. We have the personal care, which is a room that has a nurse. We have a, uh, a primary nurse in twice a week. We have foot care people in once a week um, to look after personal needs and help with medical issues. Through the pandemic, we have changed our programs. These are some of the programs that we look after now. Um, so that people can be helped in any specific area that they need some support in. I won't go through each of these. Uh, this can be made available for you at any time. We have supporter programs. So here's some of our supporter programs. Uh, Chef D, you might know, a TV celebrity, and uh, he actually has taken a person under his wing and actually works for him, um, but teaching some of our guests how to put a whole meal together, how to take leftovers and make it into something really great. Um, we also have a music group. Uh, a young lady from Laurier was teaching this and got a whole group together to, to do this. And then we have crafts and different things that we do. These are the table arrangement displays that we have out. And we have a group come together and do that about four times a year for the four different seasons. How has Ray of Hope continued? To serve the needy through this pandemic? Well, we have takeout meals. Uh, we've opened up for 48 guests inside. Um, St. John's Ambulance we've partnered with. They came with a response trailer, uh, wellness checks, and so on. And actually, I think it was a couple weeks ago, we had uh, the um, uh, vaccine. Uh, the people came in with the mobile vaccine unit, and they came in and were able to vaccine any volunteers or staff or any of our guests that uh, would come for a vaccine. Tried to educate them that this vaccine is really important, it's really good for them. Anyhow, on top of that, 300 uh, daily lunches. That was back in the summer of last year for St. John's uh, emergency shelter for 28 men overnight from June to September until they had the shelters in the hotels now. We prov still provide uh, breakfast for 120 in the new shelter. It was at the end of Waterloo. It's now another place in Guelph, I believe. November 16, we opened from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We have served breakfast, lunch, and supper now. And we have seven support programs. Who does all this help? Well, before the pandemic, it was 70,000 meals serving 2,391 marginalized people. That was 219. 20, I haven't got the figures for yet, but uh, over 4,000 food hampers helped 500 different households through our marketplace. Over 30 people were calling Ray of Hope Chapel, their church, where 100 people attend one of the Ray of Hope programs. That's what we hope to get back to somewhat uh, after this pandemic. How does financial support impact guests. Well, here's a whole lot of stories. I don't have time to go into all of them, but there are some good stories you can see on this YouTube video where Derek, I can share his name because it's very public. Um, his story is amazing. He came in, I remember booting him out so many times because of starting fights and whatnot. And now he is working in the administration of, of uh, Team Challenge down in, uh, down in by London there, Lambeth. Um, but you can come and meet numerous marginalized guests who became volunteers. Um, I can talk about some people who are doing wonderful different things in many different areas. And so these are the personal, not just the numbers, but the actual people. Um, uh, it's the volunteers that make a difference. Um, here we are with the volunteer appreciation back in 2019, the last time we could do this. We can't do this anymore. Obviously with COVID rules, you can't just get everybody in there and do wonderful, but April is our volunteer appreciation month. So it's a lot harder to do something that feels big. 
If you're interested, I do community events. I do events for poverty and homeless awareness, just talking about, you can ask all kinds of questions. I've been doing it for over 20 years with the homeless. I worked in the custody facilities before that. Yes, I've been with Ray of Hope for over 45 years now. Um, I can give you a tour and an outline of Ray of Hope Community Center. You can do a youth group event, what's for dinner. I've done that well, obviously not in the pandemic. Um, education games for you. That's a lot of fun. Well, not in the pandemic. Street walk, I pretty much can't do that in a pandemic. It's taking a group for a, for a walk. I'm talking about all the <clears throat> services that are there for the homeless. Anyhow, what can you do? Pray for effective programs. We have actually a prayer time. If you ever wanted to join us, you're more than welcome to join us. We pray at exactly 12 o'clock every Monday on Zoom. Now, we used to meet in the chapel and pray, but now we're doing it on Zoom for the last year. Um, you can come and do that. Bring a small group to serve a meal. Your church could put a small group together. We will lead you through it. We will guide you through it. We'll show you everything you need to know. You, eight or 10 people come down put on a meal and well before the pandemic you would have actually met specifically the homeless people now it's a little little less able to but you can do the meal and meet a few of them um, learn more about poverty on a street walk uh, start a small group with marginalized people mentor lead worship offer a sermon in chapel you can come down and do that uh, financially support ray of hope and we need the money because these programs continue to cost us money um, because the community center is well has been 100 percent donation funded there's no money for it so it's basically just the donation of people however right now the government is paying a small portion of it i believe our hours from 9 a.m till 2 p.m they pay the the staffing costs for that um, but that's just because they wanted us to be open for that for, because of the pandemic. Um, other than that, it's mostly 90% is uh, from donations. Become a monthly partner to ensure our stability in continuing to serve the least of these. Leave a legacy with uh, your will to Ray of Hope. Uh, never know what that might entail. Join in advocating for the poor with me. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this has been informative for you, and I will try to um, be. I am available. You can get me at uh, rayofhope.net, uh, and your pastor can pass on anything for you. Thank you very much.